This is a time in our service that we want to focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the time for believers to remember what Jesus has done for us, to examine ourselves and to confess any known sin to God. But most of all, this is the time for us to rejoice in Christ's willingness to die for our sin. As believers, we are sinners, but we are clothed in Christ's righteousness. To help us remember the love of Christ, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. If you do not have a Bible, there are men who are coming down the aisles. And they have one to offer you if you don't have one. And if you don't own a Bible, you may take this one with you. Let's pray together. Father, we are nothing without the love of Christ. All we have and all we are is because of your kindness to us. We are so grateful to be able to understand the price that was paid by Christ to save us from ourselves and to know of his willingness to go to the cross on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Let's read together. For the love of Christ controls us, Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. The context of this passage is that the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to believers in Corinth. This is the second letter to Christians in the city of Corinth, and he is, he is writing this because of disturbing news that came to him while he is at Ephesus. Paul heard that self-appointed false apostles who had created a platform to teach their false gospel were disturbing his ministry in the Corinthian church. The false apostles were attempting to convince believers to turn away from the gospel of Christ and away from Paul's teachings. These false teachers were not only attacking the truth, but they were attacking Paul's character. In the first seven chapters of 2 Corinthians, Paul is defending his ministry and his integrity. His passion for Christ was expressed in his actions and his speech, demonstrating his desire to be true to the word of God. He attempted to live in every way, what he believed, his life supported what he was preaching. Paul is writing these passages to encourage believers. He is sharing the gospel of Christ, and he is expressing his gratitude for his Savior. Paul's motiva motivation in serving Christ and his defense of his ministry is reflected in the statement, for the love of the love of Christ controls us. The love of Christ can be looked at in two different ways. Simply it is Christ's love for Paul, and secondly, Paul's love for Christ. Clearly, Christ's love for Paul came first. 1 John 4.19 says, We love because he first loved us. Christ's love for Paul was clearly seen in his sacrificial death, death, which paid for Paul's sins and reconciled him to God. And through his death on the cross, God made Jesus to be sin on our behalf. And it gave us his righteousness. It was these things that Paul describes as the love of Christ. And these things overwhelmed him, and, and it resulted in him passionately following Christ. Paul goes on to say that the love of Christ controls us. In other words, the love of Christ compels us 
It brings about action. The love of Christ compels us to serve him wholeheartedly. It is an act of grateful worship. In other words, our lives are ruled by our gratitude for the love of Christ. Paul continues to describe his identity with Christ in the latter part of verse 14 and in verse 15. Paul writes that one died for all, therefore all died. The preposition in in the statement, one died for all, for means in place of. This is the principle of substitutionary atonement. It is a true statement that Christ died in the place of all who would put their faith in him. Paul further further describes substitutionary atonement a few verses later in 2 Corinthians 5. It's in in verse uh, 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. One died for all means that Christ died on behalf of all, in place of all, and for the benefit of all. The final statement in verse 14, therefore all died, is a clarifying statement. This is referring to all who have been united with Christ in his death. He is not taking, he is not talking about a condition, but an event. All who would believe in him died with Christ at the cross. Our old man was crucified with Christ. Just as it says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Verse 15, and he died for all so that they who might live no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. The miracle of salvation is not only payment of our sin, but also describes our union with him in his resurrection. As believers, we not only experience death to our sin, but we also have Christ's righteousness imputed to us. We live no longer for ourselves, but for him. Our gratitude for our Savior should be our highest motivation to serve. The sovereign will of God chose us before the foundation of the world. He sent us, he sent his son to die in our place. And now the Holy Spirit governs our life. There is no greater privilege than to know the love of Christ and to be controlled by his love. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, we are grateful that you are here. And we praise God that he brought you here. But communion is a time for believers to examine their hearts and to reflect on what Jesus has done for us. We pray that you'll be reconciled to God today and join us in this celebration. We pray that you will be reconciled to God today and not have to someday face the wrath of God and to live eternally in the torments of hell. So those of you who do not know Jesus and even those who are not sure where you stand with him, please consider talking with any one of the elders or members at Grace Bible Church. We'd we'd love to answer any of the questions that you might have. Believers, take this time to meditate on the love of Christ and to confess any sin. Rejoice with gratitude for the love of Christ that motivates you to love and to serve him. Men, please come and serve us. Serve us. You may take communion on your own when you are ready. I'll be back in a few minutes to close our time in prayer.